Good day. Thank you for tuning into this 2017 General Election Candidate Forum for Olympia City Council Position 4. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and TCM Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its position with the governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of age 16 and up. I'm Allison Brooks from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. The candidates for Olympia City Council Position 4 are Max Brown and Clark Gilman. For this forum, each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Then I'll ask them questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by one minute from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Max Brown. Max, thank you for joining us. You have two minutes for your opening statement. Thanks, Allison. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm Max Brown. Olympia is the city that I was born and raised in. After college, my wife and I moved back to Olympia and started our family. And as we came back, one of the words that we kept hearing when we talked with our community about Olympia and how we could give back was potential. Uh, there was so much belief that Olympia had this amazing potential that, and to me, what that meant was two things. One, we're not satisfied where things are today, but we also have hope for what it can be in the future. So that got me down the path of being a part of city government as chair of the planning commission. And from there, I want to keep moving. My three priorities as a city council member would be to revitalize downtown. And in my mind, that's two specific things. Continue to see the growth in housing that we've seen over the last few years so that we can have more people living in downtown with disposable incomes who can support small businesses and have more eyes on the streets, making it a safer place. Also, we need to make sure that we have support services for our most vulnerable homeless population. Those two things in tandem, I believe, will help us get to the next step with our downtown. Second would be sustainable growth. Olympia expects 20,000 new people to call it home in the next 20 years. And if we plan for it properly and start implementing those plans, we can keep Olympia unique, livable, and affordable. Finally, I want to make sure that we have supported communities. I know many people who care deeply about our community, but don't necessarily have time on a Tuesday night to show up at a city council meeting and express their views. I want to make sure, though, that those voices are still heard, that the collective voice of our community is heard in the decisions that our city council makes, not just the loudest people and not just those that can show up on a Tuesday night. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope for your support come November. Thank you, Max. Clark, you have two minutes for your opening statement. Thank you, Allison. My name's Clark Gilman, and just like you, I am proud to call Olympia home. I'm honored for the past two years to have served you on Olympia City Council. With your vote, I'll continue to be a pragmatic steward of city services, programs, and utilities. And I will continue to speak up for fairness and for equality, because that's the point of democracy. I've served the last two years on council, and I've served for decades building organizations, leading committees, and helping groups get to compromise and decisions on difficult issues. Here's what I've learned. Getting onto Olympia City Council isn't like getting three magic wishes from a genie in a bottle. There's not some way that you walk in with these are my three proposals and this is what I'm going to enact. The reality is that together with community members and staff experts, we learn about issues and potential solutions and then we work as a committee of seven to make decisions together. I have proven experience creating space for community voice, experience listening and learning, and a history of effective work as a part of a group making difficult decisions. You know, the truth is, I've spent more work days in Carhartts and a rain jacket than I have in a suit coat. I'm a builder. I've built buildings and I've built organizations. And here's what my builder brain understands about this process. I lead people to look at the problem. I work to make a plan, to estimate the costs for that plan, and to get to work. We've already studied many of the problems before us. I push for Olympia to move from studies to action. And when the interests of the many are at stake, I'm not afraid to speak up. My name's Clark Gilman. I'm asking you to vote for me on November 7th and then to work with me for the next four years to take good care of Olympia. 
Thank you, Clark. And thank you again, Max. And we're going to go to our first question. And Max, you will get to start for two minutes. So here's the question. And then Clark, you'll get one minute. What measures would you take to further invigorate downtown Olympia? Please discuss the parking issue and also discuss how you would use the downtown historic district listed on the National Register of Historic Places and the nationally certified Olympia Main Street program to your advantage. Absolutely. That's uh, quite the mouthful. I think, uh, first of all, what we need to be thinking through is, as a community, um, our downtown is the only historic downtown in Thurston County, and it really is the downtown for our entire region. Uh, so I think the main things that we need to be doing are, as I said earlier, continue to see the investment in our housing that is happening in our downtown. The more people we have living in our downtown, the more vibrant it will become and will move from a city that is open from eight in the morning till six at night to something more like an 18 hour downtown, which I think is the direction that we need to be heading. And housing is a major component. The second component would be making sure that we have uh, resources and services for our most vulnerable homeless population. I know many people who I've talked to while I doorbell are, are saying to me, I don't feel safe going downtown anymore. And we need to make sure that there's an environment where people do feel safe. Part of that comes from making sure that our most vulnerable homeless population has access to services and in particular housing. And we also need to make sure that our, our police officers are resourced properly so that they have that we have a 24 seven walking patrol year round. When it comes to parking, this is another major challenge that we face as a community. And one, I think we need to be asking the question a little bit differently about how we address this, but also we need to be saying, what should the future of our downtown look like? I think that a parking garage should be a part of our conversation. I think though it needs to be balanced with how the cost will be incurred. If we can work with private developers and private property owners to make it work where it's not gonna be a, a major cost for our community, then I'm in favor of that. And I think we also need to work with partners like the Historic Preservation Society who has the Main Street program to invigorate and revitalize our downtown using the assets and resources that are already available to us. I think we have to really plan for our future and the growth that we experience. And a component of that is saying, let's preserve those historic buildings which really have value to us and start working to regenerate those buildings and create a new and vibrant place for those that might need some help and could be a 21st century uh, building in our downtown. Thank you, Max. Clark, you have one minute. Would you like me to repeat the question? Um, no, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. So what measures would I advocate for to further invigorate downtown? On parking, we're in the midst of, I think, really helpful conversations with developers who are building downtown um, to look at public-private partnerships to leverage public parking spot stalls within private buildings and, and new parking capacity. The historic district, we have five historic districts in the city. And I think they're important for both focusing civic pride and for attracting outside resources um, to, to bring to us. And the Main Street program is what funds the Olympia Downtown Association. And I'm especially excited that I've, I've been working on a project to bring a very small business extension agent down on weekday mornings to the ODA office to help keep small businesses successful on our Main Street. Thank you. Okay, our second question. Clark, you will have two minutes. What type of relationship sh should the city have with the Port of Olympia? That goes Great. to you, two minutes. Thank you. The Port, of, the Port of Olympia is a defining landmark and a center of our economy um, for the city of Olympia. I think that, that few, um, I'll say it like this, whether you're um, using the port recreationally at Swan Town Marina or walking along the boardwalk or whether you're commercially involved in having goods shipped in and out of the port, it's, it's really central to our local economy and it's also a major uh, user of space, of real estate in what's right close into downtown with the Port Peninsula. Um, so. The, the relationship has been strong. It's strained by a couple of specific uh, disagreements about some types of freight that come in and out. And I, I think we're gonna continue to have those disagreements, especially when it, it has to do with how much Olympia provides security and police forces um, to, to take care of uh, public protests against military shipments or fracking sands. 
but in terms of trying to partner on local economic development opportunities that the port uniquely brings, I, I think we're in solid shape and we've, we've had a series of good collaborative meetings and, and formal joint meetings. So. Thank you. Max, you have one minute for a response. Thank you. I think in, in my perspective of what's happening with the port in our relationship, any good relationship is built on trust and communication, two things that I would want to bring forward with our port commissioners and have our city manager working with the executive director of the port to build that relationship. I think the biggest asset that we can really have a conversation about, in particular to downtown, is the port is a major uh, property owner in our downtown. And they have opportunities to continue to help us with housing, as we're seeing right now on State Avenue, taking their properties and turning them into partnerships with uh, private property owners and private developers to create more housing stock for our downtown. I think there's also an opportunity for us to diversify our economy and saying what port properties are down there currently that could be used for manufacturing space of uh, green technologies and new technologies and partnering as well with South Puget Sound Community College and saying what education and training can our students get now so that they can enter into the economy in manufacturing plants that are put on and, and are developed by the port in those port properties. Thank you. Uh, next question, Max. What are your views on homelessness and what solutions do you recommend? You have two minutes. Absolutely. This is, this is the biggest challenge right now facing the uh, city of Olympia. When I speak with people as I doorbell, it's the number one question that I receive. What are you going to do about the homelessness in Olympia and in particular downtown? And I, I see it as three approaches because, frankly, not every person who's experiencing homelessness has the same, the same story, nor do they have the same set of needs or will require the same solution. So we have to think about this in different uh, pers perspectives and with different uh, tools to, to address it. The first one, for those most vulnerable, those that are chronically homeless, who've been on the streets for more than a year, have a disability and a mental health problem or a chemical dependency issue, Housing first needs to be a part of our solution. We need to get those folks off of the streets into housing with access to the support services they need. You're going to see some taxes and opportunity for a levy for you to, to vote for in February to address this. That's an area where we can continue to move forward as a community. And it needs to be a part of a regional solution. Olympia is really bearing the brunt of this, and we need to work with our partners to allow for it, some of that pressure to come off of just Olympia. And I think part of that's reaching out with our, non, our nonprofits and our faith leaders in our community, folks who we haven't historically worked with, help them with coordination, bring in some more money. There's 450 students in the Olympia School District who are experiencing homelessness. I think if we bring those partners in together, we can start to rapidly rehouse for $1,200. $1,500, get those folks, those families into housing. And finally, we do know there's an element of, of homeless folks in our, in our population who are um, bad actors. They're preying on those who are extremely vulnerable, and that needs to change. A 24-7 walking patrol, I think, could help actually alleviate and change some of the culture in our downtown, which could help us in that regard. I think we also need to change the fact that if we have ordinances on the books, we need to enforce them. And if we're not going to enforce them, they shouldn't be on the books. So how do we make sure that our police officers are resourced properly so that they can do their job and create a safe space for those people who want to enjoy our downtown? Thank you, Max. Clark, you have one minute for a response. Thank you, Allison. So with two years of week in and week out um, working on this issue, hearing from many, many people, um, I've, I've come to a different understanding than I started with. First, it's an issue of poverty. It's an, it's, if people weren't really, really poor, then their substance abuse or their mental health issues wouldn't be such a point of friction downtown. So it's a poverty issue. Second, it's about how we define community. That I imagine Olympia is 50,000 people living in community who all hope that we can retire in this place and that our kids can make a life in this place. And that's a very different lens from imagining that it's a collection of income generating properties and that the people can come and go according to the rent. The last thing I'd say is engagement. These last couple winters we've had a warming center with no activity, no engagement, and leaving people on their own to kill time all day is just not enough. Thank you, Clark. And you get the next question and you'll have two minutes. Other than the budget, Please identify two major concerns for the city of Olympia in the next four years and how would you propose to deal with them? Clark, this is yours for two minutes. Yes, I understand. Yes. Oh, okay, Thank sorry. You. Thank you. So 
two major concerns other than the budget. The, the first one is certainly the, the, the issue of homelessness, most specifically about friction downtown between very poor people and other people who are coming to shop or work or park downtown and trying to find ways to minimize those interactions that are scary to people. Um, the community care center is a great start now that it's open. Um, and and the, uh, the public safety levy, which will be on the budget, <laughs> which will be on the ballot this fall, is an opportunity to put more resources to policing. Um, and, and I think we just have to continue to imagine ways to engage people. So that's one issue is dealing with homelessness. Another one that's been really high profile and we're finally moving on it is public land, parkland acquisition, both for additional parks and for green spaces. I'm excited that we're already at 350 of the 500 acre goal that was you know, set years ago and we weren't making progress towards it with the acquisition of LBA Woods, of Kaiser Woods on the west side and uh, a few key small acquisitions for neighborhood parks and the Heron Rookery. We're, we're growing that acreage really quickly and with the, the instrument of the Metropolitan Park District, we have opportunities across these next four years to make more decisions and to acquire more pieces of land, both to have green space for future generations and for their ecosystem benefits for all the rest of the creatures who share this place with us. Thank you, Clark. Max, you have one minute for a response. Thank you. Uh, the big one for me, I would say, I would agree with uh, my opponent here, which is uh, homelessness and revitalizing our downtown, making it a safe and welcoming place for people of all income levels, all ages, all backgrounds to enjoy. Uh, I think the second one for me, though, has to be sustainable growth and housing. Right now, we are at the forefront of what is going to be a really large change in the way our city looks. We expect 20,000 people to join us in the next 20 years. We're starting to feel that pressure today. And my concern is if we don't act now on an issue that, yes, is 20 years out, if we don't act today, Olympia will no longer be unique. Olympia will no longer be affordable, nor will it be livable. But we have mechanisms in place today that we could pull that would allow us to keep Olympia much like we envision in terms of the values that we have. It might look different, but we can actually achieve these goals, including making sure that we affect our climate action goals and our green space goals if we start to change the way we think about development and growth, and we should be doing that today. Thank you, Max. And I'm glad we started talking about parks because that will bring us to our next question. Max, you'll have two minutes to answer this. Do you support the Views on Fifth project or do you support a park for the Capitol Lake Isthmus? Please give your reasons and specific facts in support of your opinion. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to say um, I've heard some amazing ideas from all perspectives on what that property could become, the isthmus or the mistake by the lake, however you want to call it. Uh, ultimately, the, the reality is, and I've had conversations with that property owner, his plan is not my perfect plan. It's not what I would want to see for the next hundred years. But there are some realities for us as a community that we have to face. There's a private property owner who owns that building, who is not willing to sell, and likely we would be spending 10 to $12 million if we were to purchase that building and bring it down. And, and that doesn't even start the conversation about developing it into a park. Um, surprisingly, you know, I hear a lot of folks say there's overwhelming public support that it should become a park. I'm not sure that I would say that there's overwhelming support. As I've gone doorbelling, as I've been talking with people in the community, most folks, if not everybody who I've spoken to about this issue, says that they're comfortable and in some cases really like the concept of what's happening with the Views on Fifth project. Uh, again, it's not, in my mind, the perfect solution, but the challenge the city faces is we don't have the money to afford the building currently, and it's going to tie up, as my opponent mentioned earlier, we have 150 acres of parks land that we still have to purchase with our Metropolitan Parks District money. And if we spend $12 million of that on a one to two acre parcel, it's going to be very challenging to meet those voter achieved goals. So we have to be strategic about how we spend those dollars. Uh, and I would say the city needs to allow this property owner to move forward 
to allow for more housing stock to reach our community. And we can have a really vibrant area that works for our community and still achieves many of our parks goals. This is just not the right time. The city has spent 10 years kind of kicking this around and not acting, and this is where we found ourselves. So at this point, I'm willing to let the property owner do what he is rightfully allowed to do, and then we will see what the future holds. Thank you. Clark, you have one minute for a response. Thank you. So approximately 10 years ago, the Department of Corrections moved out of the Capitol Center building. And it didn't take very long as that building was sitting as a vacant building for a community a community effort to coalesce around trying to remove it and make it part of the, the Capitol Park. Um, it, it didn't succeed and it's been a source of huge frustration. It's created turnover on city council. It's created massive public meetings in the Washington Center. It's been a, a really frustrating experience of many people in the public weighing in and not getting what they're hoping for. What we have been able to do is image source has revitalized the old Kentucky Fried. The city bought the public housing office and the health department building and tore both those down. We're making interim improvements there. The fountain has become the successful public plaza on that stretch of land. And as Max said, right now, there's an owner of that building and there's an active development proposal. And we'll see what happens should they falter. Thank you, Clark. And we're coming to our last question. And Clark, you get to take the last question. You'll have two minutes. What are your funding priorities and how would you plan to balance the budget? My funding priorities for Olympia are to find the greatest good for the greatest number of people. I think that's, that's a matter of seeking balance in what sorts of incentives and, and opportunities we create to encourage development so that we spend money, but we don't spend more than it takes to encourage a project or leverage, leverage a good project. Um, I think it's also about stopping to look at revenue sources and, and stopping to look back, if this is all of the government we wanna buy and, and we know how much it costs, then we have to look again at the revenue sources we have to find what's fair, what's equitable, and what's enough to fund the level of government that we want to have. Um, I'm not very excited about trying to continue to pursue a tenth of a percent of sales tax here and uh, $10 a year on property tax over here without looking at the fairness and equity of the taxes we have now and without looking to replace taxes that are anachronistic. Uh, for example, for decades, about 10% of our income came from a tax on landline telephones. That's almost gone away. Um, sales tax from vehicles right now, this, the auto mall is a major share of our income and it varies as the economy goes up and down, as people are buying cars or not buying cars. It's, it's not resilient and it's, it's not dependable and it's not fair or equitable. So my, my goal would be first to look at how much government we want and what are equitable sources of revenue to fund that level of government. Thank you, Clark. Max, you have one minute for a response. Can, can you actually repeat the question one more I time? I can. Allison? Thank you. What are your funding priorities and how would you plan to balance the budget? Great, thank you. So for me, the, the funding priorities are really the priorities of what city government should be doing. Public safety, infrastructure. Those are the big ones on the, on the budget list and we need to make sure that those are fully funded. And I think part of it is also looking to some of the things that we need to be thinking about for the future. How do we fund a mitigation strategy against sea level rise in our downtown? It's part of our comprehensive plan to save our downtown. How are we gonna pay for that? I think we also need to think about housing. How do, where can the city play a part in making sure that we have affordable housing for people in our community? And I think for me, all of this starts with saying, can we have strategic investments where we do spend some money that in turn will generate more revenue? What would it look like for us to spend money to have a new capital way, a real true main street that's been beautified. This is something that's already been planned for. We just need to act on it. And what kind of generation of revenue could that bring back into our city? We need to be strategic and we also need to make sure that we have funding available for those things that are most important for our community and that only cities can pay for our infrastructure, our roads and sidewalks and our public safety. Thank you, Max. And that brings us to the closing comments. You'll each have one minute and Max, you'll get to go first with for one minute closing comment. And then Clark, you'll literally close us out with your closing comments. Max, you Great. have one minute. Thank you. 
I think as you've heard today, there are short-term challenges that our community faces and there are long-term challenges. One thing I've known as being a part of the Planning Commission and now being around city government for several years is Olympia is very good at planning. We are not very good at implementing. And that's what I want to do as your city council member. When I hear potential, I think people know that that's a matter of saying, let's take the plans and let's implement them into good use so we can realize what our whole community wants. And that is a capital city that people can be proud of. So for me, I, I really hope for your support in November to take that potential and make it a reality by taking all these plans and finally putting them to good use. Thank you, Max. Clark. Great. First, I want to thank the League of Women Voters and Thurston County Media for this opportunity. This is really great. Um, here's what I'd like you to do. One, it's vote for me on November 7th. And two, ask one other person to pay attention to this local government set of races. It makes a difference. There are things that are so frustrating at the national level that we can reach right in and spend money and direct staff and do things together at the city level. So ask another person to pay attention to the League of Women Voters. They have their online guide. The Olympian will be doing their editorial boards. Take a look at the local, local races and uh, join us in making Olympia a more democratic and more awesome place. Thanks. And thank you, and thank you for participating in the League of Women Voters General Election Forum for Olympia City Council Position 4. We encourage viewers to vote in the general election on or before November 7, 2017. The League particularly thanks TC Media for their ongoing support and assistance. And thank you to our two candidates today, Max Brown and Clark Gilman. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you, thank you to our viewers.